Okay, so there we go. Complete Strategist 2014 Store Championships took place on February the 15th, 2014 at the Complete Strategist. This is round five. I'm not playing. On the right is Chris, who you, if you've seen any of my videos, you've seen by now. On the left is Alad, who you saw uh, in videos from 20-sided store February tournament. I played against him. I, I indexed that Jinteki deck like crazy. Who knows if it's been modified since then? It probably has. Um, we just saw in round four that that kit deck is loaded with indexing. So it could be doom for this Jinteki again. I'm just going to get that Magnum Opus Gordian Blade activity, and then what? Then what? Uh-oh. Bad news. Shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. Well, what else is there to say? Um, there are, uh, The 20-sided store in Brooklyn, New York, uh, is going to have a store championship. I believe that is going to be on Sunday, February 2nd. No, Sunday, March 2nd. March 2nd. February 2nd is already passed. March 2nd, 2014 will be the 20-sided store championship. I'll be taking some videos there as well. Uh, you should go over there and, and compete with us because it'll be awesome. I think there is a... Also, there is a, a board game cafe in New York City, the Uncommons, and they are going to have a store championship as well. I don't know what the date of that is, but if you go to our meetup group... Uh, if you are anywhere in the New York City area, you should go to meetup.com. There is a meetup called New York Cards, NY Cards, that has meetups for all Fantasy Flight LCGs. Uh, we used to have a separate Netrunner meetup. You might find that by accident. We stopped using it, and we switched over and joined in with the other one to save money. So we only had to pay for one meetup account, not two. And you will also see meetups there for Game of Thrones, Star Wars LCG, etc. But all, every Netrunner event in the New York City area is uh, is listed there. You will meet me and all these other people at those events. Um, also, to avoid the questions I know people are going to ask, uh, Chris is using futuristic uh, tokens, futuristic uh, credit tokens. There was a Kickstarter for those. You can just search for it. Uh, and he has penny gems for his click counters, which are I guess stickers he bought on Etsy or somewhere that you attach to US pennies uh, to turn them into nice little counters. Uh, okay, here we go. Jinteki using the standard credits that come with Fantasy Flight Netrunner um, and an Android Netrunner. Jinteki installing two phase down cars, a little shell game, and in protecting R&D, but nothing else. Scores a Gila hands right away. That's really good for Jinteki, who has money issues. Able to pull that one out. Listen, if you're Jin, like Jinteki's almost the only um, corp who can do that, right? Um, because just about any runner is going to be scared to run a face down Jinteki card on turn one of the game. Uh, if you know this kit deck, you know he's getting his Magnum Opus turn one, as you've seen him do probably for the third time now which means he's not running anything and risking a net damage, which could take away that Magnum Opus. Uh, and Andromeda, oop, there goes a vamp to a net damage. That was from the uh, Gila hand score. Um, yeah, and uh, Andromeda usually doesn't run turn one unless she has a dirty laundry. Are you going to dirty laundry some face down Jinteki possible snare turn one? Are you? Do you dare? I don't know if you dare. Because you don't have another spare click to, uh, to remove that tag, do you? And maybe you have a networking in your hand? I don't know. Or uh, a lawyer up? I guess you couldn't play a lawyer up. That's a double, right? I don't know. Yeah, it's a rare runner that will make that run. So a good way to sneak out a triple advance agenda. That's like the perfect agenda to sneak out in that fashion is, is Gila Hand. So if I was Jinteki and I drew that my first turn, my opening hand, I would not mulligan and I would do that exact play. Okay, he's blocking up R&D. I guess he learned his indexing lesson. Uh, and two ice, very important. He put the two ice there. So now, even when Kit puts down the Gordian Blade, 
uh, is Kit just going to run there right away? No, because it could be, you know, what if the first one's chum? I guess you break the chum. Even if you keep going, it's a neural katana. What do you do? You, you, you know, your, your ability has been canceled. Um, you need to get the, you know, probably a fem token on the back one, as we've seen before, or something uh, to even make a run at R&D. Plenty of money, though, that magnum opus, and a quality time. He's probably looking for the Gordian Blade with the quality time. Even though there's no ice on anything really right now, but I guess you do want to be able to get it on the table uh, before, you know, net damage and stuff uh, ruins your setup. Especially when there isn't a lot of pressure right now. Um, oh, look at that, a feedback filter. Feedback filter, I think, these days is a great... You know, people people are not really paying attention to this card. I think it is a great one-of card uh, in a Shaper deck with a Magnum Opus because without a Magnum Opus, you can't really use its net damage uh, defending ability, right? Um, but if you have Magnum Opus, uh, it's like you're going to eventually draw this card. So you only need one copy of it, right? And if you have that card and you have Magnum Opus you're basically, it will be impossible, even though it's three credits to avoid a net damage, which is way more than a net shield. This doesn't take up memory. And if your deck's getting low, you can just avoid all the net damage. It'll be expensive, but you can basically prevent yourself from being decked and prevent yourself from losing important cards when you have Magnum Opus money. As long as you have one of those in your deck, and even if you draw it at the last second. So um, in this case, the runner drew it very early so we're not going to see and him take any net damage he doesn't want to because he's always going to have you know extra credits from magnum opus since jinteki is rather slow he'll have extra time to click the magnum opus and here comes the brutal vamp you saw the other one get net damaged um oh okay so on while the vamp is coming in he wisely spends credits to res the pro contacts uh, now notice, right, this is the thing. The HQ is unprotected. He vamped. It's impossible for him to res those ice on the remote, right, because he has no money. The only way he could have stopped him would be pop-up window ice wall, right, or pop-up window something, or pop-up paper wall. A paper wall would not have stopped him because he could have gotten a Gordian blade with the self-modifying code. Um, but yeah, it's just something, a paper wall, a pop-up window, then paper wall, or pop-up window... Even Draco, he would have beat the trace on, right? It's, you know, it's it's very difficult if you've just been vamped and the, you're a corp with zero credits, um, right? Is is that's what that's what you do if you play vamp with same old thing where you keep vamping over and over again? Basically, that's your play. Is your ideal play is that you run HQ only. The only ice ever resed are the ice on HQ, and when you run other servers like R and D and remotes. You only run them when the corp is flat broke because they've just been vamped. And they are unable to res those other ice, so it doesn't matter what they are. Right? See, look at this. He, t he installed and took a credit. So I guess it could be a fetal AI or a shock. It's unlikely to be a snare because if he runs there, um, he ain't going to be able to set the snare off. Right? In fact, knowing that he can't set a snare off right now. This is another great thing about vamping Jinteki is you know he can't set off a snare or anything. I would run HQ like crazy. Um, I would get to see all the cards in there. I would... Uh, if there are any shocks, I could get them out of there. If there are any fetals, I could just score them. Right? Um, oh yeah, I guess you, you probably want to... Uh, maybe I take... He's, I think he's doing it right. You take eight, then go for it. Because you want to... Oh, he's just going to run R&D. I guess he's not afraid of the one credit. Yeah. Okay. Don't, you can't res the ice. Nope. No res. No res. And... Nope. Okay. Uh-oh. It's a melange. Oh. That's another th good card in Jinteki. You can't... It's not a card that you're going to be able to pump and pump and pump and, and take tons of credits from. But it's pretty much a guaranteed uh, take six because you install that face down card, people aren't running it, even if it's unprotected. And then, uh, you know, they're going to run it and trash it right away. 
But look at this. Because he just took six, and it is maybe he can defend it in this situation because he just took six. A vamp was net damaged early. A vamp was just played. He still has the tag from the vamp, you'll notice. Um, but I guess he doesn't have any resources, and the Jinteki doesn't seem to have tag punishment. Even if he closed accounts, that probably wouldn't that wouldn't matter. He's a magnum opus. He'd just take eight the next turn. Hmm. But yeah, this is tricky. If he doesn't have the, a third vamp in hand or a same old thing, he basically has to run that. If he, he can either let him have the melange or run it uh, with the risk of, um, you know, dealing with that second ice. Right? Okay, as a workshop. Oh, he's getting that femme situation happening. Oh, he's clearing a tag. Oh, because he laid the workshop down, now he clears the tag. That's pretty good. Don't, you know, don't clear the tag sooner than you have to. All right, because he's letting him keep the melange. It's a melange versus Mopus. The M economy fight. Snowball goes into the workshop. And I guess self-modifying code can become Gordian Blade when needed. So... All that is left is for the Femme to emerge. Yep. Go, Melange, go. Dig for Moon Rocks. Dig them up. Is that another turn of Melange? Third melange turn in a row. That is one rich Jinteki. Oof. All right. Going to HQ. He's got a lot of money. But snares can be set off now, right? I would have felt safer running HQ when the corp was broke. As a shock. Since he's not doing data suckers, I don't think he plans to run archives ever. So trashing the shock in this case is actually an okay idea. Uh, is he trashing it? Yes? No? Maybe? Oh, he paid two. Okay, he's trashed it. He lost an R&D interface to the net damage. That's tough, because how can you get that back? But maybe you don't really want it against Jinteki, right? Because you're afraid of getting hurt, so it's not the worst. And of course, don't run last click. Especially against Jinteki, don't run last click. Oh, install double advance. Ooh. Ooh, install double advance. He got rid of the melange for that one, which is kind of which tells you it's it's a good one. But at the same time, he's already pumped the melange three times. Getting rid of it is not as big a deal. Um as it normally would be. He can get into that remote, maybe, because he, you know, it's get his Gordian blade for the first ice, no matter what. If the second ice is a barrier, he's set. If the second ice is a sentry, hmm. But if the first ice is a barrier or a sentry, hmm. Oh, is he just gonna use it before seeing the ice? He's going to use it before seeing the ice, the Gordian Blade, no matter what. Okay, so what I would have done is I would have run, seen the first ice. And if the first ice was... Oh, it's a tough call, right? Tough, tough call. Because it's based, there is a situation now where it's the second... Basically, if the second ice is sentry... Um, Or trap even, right? Uh, Chum data mine would really screw him up. Oh, there's the test, a test run, a test run fam, just like the last game. So we got the test run fam, yeah, obviously. No worries. So that was actually click one, the test run. The SMC did not take a click. Three clicks left. Probably gonna maybe run the remote or take two and run the remote. I would run the remote so that you could draw back up, uh, assuming you're gonna take net damage. 
uh, from the access. Oh, he's going to take two and then run. Hmm. Take two more. Whoa, so he's not leaving himself any clicks left from with which to draw his hand back up at the end of this run. If that's a June bug, um, this could be doom. Okay, so yep, there is the chum, which prevents the fem bypass, but it doesn't prevent the, the break by fem. So with the fem, that costs two to boost, one to break, so three. So, uh, oh, he broke, did he break the chum? I think he broke the chum with the Gordian Blade. Or would it... Uh, yeah, he broke the... Ch no, or did he not? Yeah, once you see it's a chum... Oh, indexing lost. I <laughs> think the Corporate War is scored. <laughs> yeah, after melanging a bunch, a Corporate War is a great agenda to score. The Femme goes back up top. No scavenge today. Yeah, I guess you gotta break that chum in case this data mine, right? And then when you see Neural, just break it. With the fem, or, oh no, then bypass the neural, right? So you break the chum for three credits with Gordian, and then you bypass the neural with one credit because the chum didn't go off, so bypassing is safe. Okay, the snowball comes out. The remote, again, double advanced. How can you get in the remote now? You the fem is gone. I right, guess you could draw it and install it, but you don't have you don't have the credits for that. Do you have another test run and a scat? You, you know, if you had a scavenge, you probably would have played that instead of taking two credits, because that scavenge would have been worth friggin' you know six credits, more than that even. Making a fem free, well, a fem, you know, three for the test run and the scavenge, right? So if you just take the nine cost of the fem and the three cost of the test run, that's that's test, the scavenge is a six credit play. Not counting you know the card you spend on scavenging and and whatnot. Oh, then again, maybe it was smart. Even if he had a scavenge, if he had played it, how many cards would have been left in his hand, right? Um, I've had that problem where I was like, I, in one game I had four brain damage. I was like, I can take a fifth brain damage, and I test run and ran, and but the test run was the last card in my hand, so I, you know, I only had one card in my hand, <laughs> right? Because I had four brain damage, so I used the test run and I ran. I hit a brain damage, but my hand was at zero, so I died. He didn't take it. A fetal was scored. That's okay. Let Jinteki score a fetal. Let Jinteki score a fetal. Oh, he paid the three to avoid the net damage with his feedback filter. Hmm. I guess he really must like the cards in his hand, or he could really couldn't risk losing any of them. Enough that he would spend one and a half clicks worth of money. All right, he's taken eight credits with the magnum opus because at this moment in time, there is no uh, Jinteki pressure on the table. All right, there's nothing on the table for him to run. So take eight. Let the fem count down on the workshop. Here we go. Make them run. Yeah. Install advance. Well, I I guess, you know, if he's going to get in there, he's going to have to pay to bring his fem out, right? So that's, you're basically saying, all right, while your fem is still work, getting worked on in the workshop, I'm going to install and advance and score some stuff. Oof, but look how much, look how much money he's been spent. You know, he melanged three times. He's down to seven credits. If he'd only gotten that corporate war, he would be, first of all, the score would be five to two, right? That was a huge swing losing the corporate war. Also, he'd have seven more credits than he has now. He'd have 14 instead of seven. So really, the, the corporate war was, was the huge, huge play this game. You know, scoring the fetal alone cost him five credits. Right? That's, almost, that's pretty much a whole melange, basically. 
Almost. Taking four. Oh, I see. He's setting aside, right, um, s some of his credits. See that? How most of his credits are, right? And it's like, those are just still credits in his credit pool. Oh, here comes a vamp. Ooh. Yep. He was setting them aside to match what was necessary for vampage. Is he going to run R&D since none of the ice can be rezzed? Run something. R&D. Yep, can't res, can't res, because you guys got vamped. What is it? It's something you can't add score. So He's keeping the tag. Is he keeping the tag? Is he keeping the tag that the workshop could be trashed? Oh, but I think he calculate. Ooh, I don't know. The workshop could be trashed with the feminine. I think it could be. If he wants to remove... The femme from the workshop, he's... Oh, he was vamped. He would have had to take to... Oh, man. As soon as the corp... The only thing he could have done... Right, that was... The corpse should have just trashed that workshop. He should have take to trash workshop because the only... if Once you say trash workshop, it's trashed. The, the timing for him to pay the femme out of the workshop is after he takes the second credit. So actually, if I was the runner, if the corpse says take one, I'd say, okay, take two... As soon as he says take two, I'll say, wait, after you take two, I'm bringing my femme out of my workshop. That way, you know, because as soon as he says click three, trash workshop, then that's it. Workshop is trashed, and so his femme is gone. I'm surprised he just didn't notice that tag was sticking there from the vamp um, on that. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe he just had more urgent matters, right? It's like if you know, if he didn't take, if he didn't, if he tried to trash the workshop, maybe then um, he wouldn't. He would have basically had another turn of zero credits. He would have had to throw a card out. He couldn't. He'd have to allow him another R&D access, it would have, you know, there's, there's negative aspects there too, maybe, you know, that he knew he could trash the workshop and decided not to. All right, here we go. Bringing the femme out. Oh, he doesn't have enough memory uh, for all that because he doesn't notice the last game, he had the toolbox in the other game. It does not have memory for that um, snowball. So he, he replaced the snowball with the femme. Wow. Cerebral Overrider. Boom! Goes the dynamite. Oh, he's going to trash. This is the other great thing about Feedback Filter. It is one of the only ways, uh, besides, I think, Monolith. <laughs> Monolith doesn't even really prevent brain damage, really. Um, you have to throw a program out of your hand, right? Um but I think it's the only way to prevent brain damage. So this is a Rebo Overrider. It's like, that's it. That's, you know, it's like, people be like, install Advanced Advanced Junebug. It's like, I install my Deus Ex and I run. Oh, is it Junebug? I'd prevent the whole thing. If it's a Cerebral, if you access it, you get hit by it. There's, there's no, you know, there's no buts about it. Unless you have Feedback Filter. So that feedback filter, having it early there, was actually kind of huge. Um, run the unadvanced card. It's something. Maybe it's another private contract so you didn't want to trash. I guess he felt safe running that because the corp only had three credits. It could not be a snare. Yeah, or if it, could, it could have been a snare. It just wouldn't have fired. All right, he gets into the remote again. It's a shock. Does he let the shock stay? He lets the shock stay. He takes the net damage. Loses. Oh, Gordian Blade. He doesn't need that. Okay. Draw.
I guess he was he was vamped twice and he net damaged one vamp. So all three vamps are in the heap. Unless there's the same old thing coming. Um, I guess now Jinteki is perfectly content to leave HQ wide open. He recovered from those vamps pretty well. Usually the vamps just, you know... He managed to get the ice on his remote resed, even though they're basically cancelled out. Um, they're still a little bit costly uh, for the runner to get through. He has to either break the chum and bypass the katana, or let the chum go off and then break... That's probably more expensive. The, the cheapest way through is to break the chum with the Guardian Blade and then bypass the katana for one. Breaking a strength five katana with this with a fem costs two, four, six, seven credits. So that's and doing it the other way costs one, two, three, four credits. Right, so now he's running R and D, but the corp has money. It's a chum. If that's a barrier, you don't want to keep going. Or oh, or just break the break the chum with your guardian blade and keep going, right? Oh, it could have. That's right. It could be a uh, a data mine. Mm. Oh, I guess no, because if you break the chum, you don't care if it's a data mine. You're actually very happy if it's a data mine, because that means you take the damage, it goes away, and then you get free R and D uh, hits. He's checking his heap. Hedge fund, back in the money. I think he was made. Yeah, he was probably. Was he checking to see if there were no vamps left before um, using his hedge fund? Ronan gone. Running the trash. No, not running the trash. Okay. Running HQ again. Cerebral, get that out of here. <laughs> and fetal score six. Six points. You got to take that damage because uh, you don't have your feedback filter anymore. Blah. Test run. Magnum. Don't care about the Magnum and something else. Maybe you don't even care about the test run anymore since the Fem is already out. Hey, if you test run anything, you're... Oof. A brand new remote. Plenty of money. Two ice. If the back one is a barrier, which it probably is, it's probably like, you know... Anything followed by Himitsubako. Pop-up window, Himitsubako. It's keeping him out. And unless he scavenges the femme to that other remote, if he still has a scavenge. Draw! And he just took a bunch of net damage, and he's low on money, so... It could actually... This could be a window for the corp here. Uh, even though he's down 6-3. to three. Um... You know, he could, uh, you know, the runner's got to draw cards and take credits and whatnot. Yep, draw, draw, draw. Take two, yep. This is your chance to score here, Jinteki. You can do it. You can make it happen. Did he just spend his whole turn? What is what is he doing? RSVP in his hand, okay. I wonder if the corp forgot he has Gilahan scored. That happens to me a lot. I once lost a game because I had a government contract scored I forgot to use. <laughs> hmm. 
no, no, I think he remembered he had Gilan scored. I think he installed and then took three. He runs in as a Hokusai. He's going to take a net damage from that. Is he going to trash it? It's the toolbox. Oh, he probably wanted to put that toolbox in the workshop. Maybe he's got another one. He's trashing the Hokusai. Uh-oh, corporate war, and he won the corporate war. That's why he's taking all that money uh, to make sure he had seven after scoring the corporate war. The score is now 6-5. Look at this Jinteki go. This kit that manhandled that Wayland uh, and shut it out. Um, now having trouble with the Jinteki. <laughs> Is that RSVP in HQ? Oh, he's, he's just checking HQ. He doesn't even care if there's a snare. RSVP, RSVP. RSVP. Is his hand two RSVPs? Is it? Is it? Is it? I wouldn't be afraid to run R&D in this situation. I break the chum with my Gordian if I have enough money. Uh, the worst that other ice could be is a wall of thorns for two net damage, right? Uh, if it is a sentry or a code gate, I'm breaking it. So, you know, what's it going to be? An enigma? Okay, I'll lose a click on the run. He borrowed his D6 to decide what to install. Well, something was going on there. Yeah, when you spend a bunch of clicks taking credits with Magnum Opus and a bunch of clicks drawing cards, you know, it's like you make a run, you're going to get drained. Um, so that run has to be a worthwhile run. If you get tricked into spending your resources on uh, runs that don't score or get traps, you know, you, you fall behind. You got to spend a whole nother turn. Okay, good. It was a neural, neural katana. See, you could just break that. So. And what is it? Was it a shock? Oh, it was a snare, which was set off. Oof. Okay. And a second card, which was not a winning agenda. It's got a second tag now. Things are getting pretty crazy here. You gotta draw. So look at this, if there's a winning agenda in archives, you can run, access it first because you choose the order of access in archives and you win. But if there isn't a winning agenda in there, then you have to access everything in the order of your choosing and the shocks will just screw you up. Uh, you're gonna, you know, there's at least two in there. He's checking the face up ones. Probably doing things like counting snares and hokusais to see like how many are left um, in the deck. You know, it's like if you see three snares in there, well, then you know, then if you see three shocks, you know, that's not one over there. Three ice though. Uh, yeah, if any one of those is a barrier. Besides the front one, uh, the runner is not getting in. You know, his snowball, he had to throw it out to get his femme working. And because he did that, he's got six points. So was it a bad move? Probably not. That's a wall of thorns, right? Um, I don't think the corp can res a wall of thorns right now. He only has six credits. Hokusai, trash that before it hits the table? No, he's not trashing it. Interesting. I wouldn't want to let him have that. I mean, if that's a brain trust, oof. 
you know, you got to imagine there's two more brain trusts in the deck, right? Then if, uh, if that's a brain, you know, he just puts a brain trust on the table and you don't run it, that's, that's GG. Oof. So I don't want him putting out a Hokusai, making me think it's a brain trust. He's going to R&D, paying his way in. That's it. There's a brain trust. Runner wins. Runner wins. What's that over there? That's a fetal. He would have won next turn. Or was it advanced once or twice? It doesn't matter. He was he was going to win with that fetal. You couldn't get in through those three. You couldn't risk the three ice, right? Something like, you know, chum Himitsu Baka was just going to drain your money and your time. You had to just, you know, you knew you could get into R&D. You just had to trust that you were going to score there before the corp could score somewhere else. Um, there wasn't a trick of light possibility on the table. Um, it didn't look like there was any other uh, fast advancing going on as well. It was just all tricks and traps. So there you go. Even when it's uh, it's in trouble, right? He didn't get to indexing even once, I don't think. Um, you know, which is which is how I beat that deck. Or at least the, the previous incarnation of it. Okay, uh, looks like uh, we're moving on to game two of round five. I'm going to go get some water. Okay, again, this is a situation where... Ah, that water's tasty. New York water, best water. Um, yeah. Uh, this is a situation where, you know, game one of the match took a long time, relatively speaking. Uh, so, you know, during the game two of the match, you know, you're a little bit hurried. I hate having to play when when you're in a rush, right? It's like you know you you don't. You know, it's like it's good to be calm, pay attention to everything, you know, paying attention to the time and feeling that pressure of the the clock ticking down. Just just you know, it's it's one thing too many to worry about. Shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. Everybody's shuffling. Usually I just edit this part out that goes between the games. But I'm sitting here drinking my tasty New York water. Did you know that New York City drinking water comes from the Catskill Mountains, upstate New York? There is an extremely long underground uh, canal, uh, aqueduct. Um, I think it might be the longest man-made aqueduct or something uh, that brings the water down to us. So the tap water that comes out of the tap in New York is so delicious. And I do not take it for granted because I know in most of the world that, uh, you know, drinking water is just undrinkable, you know, and not just in, you know, developing countries and, and places with lots of poverty, but also you know, New Jersey, um, and such, right? Um, places you never want to go. You can't drink the water that comes out of the faucet. So whenever I drink New York City drinking water straight out of my sink, I fully appreciate that it is healthy and free of poison and tastes delicious and quenches my thirst. It is an issue that bothers you. There are many good charities that are working to uh, provide people with tasty drinking water who currently do not have access to it. All right, he's Forge and Activating. We got a Rainer versus MVN. Forge on the Viper. Res that Viper for five. 
Forge and Reyna is a really good combo. Oh, shut down. Ooh, that's dirty. I guess MBN, you know, he, was, he wasn't he was low on ice in the previous game we watched, but he didn't have the ice he needed. In this game, uh, he seems to be low on ice. At least he's against an Anarch, who's a little slower than a criminal. Okay, so that's an upgrade he put there on R&D. Um, we like to put our up upgrades out in front so we don't forget about them. A lot of times people run. The upgrades are in the back. They forget to access them, which you're supposed to have to access them. Ah, now I got the hiccups from my uh, drinking water. <laughs> but yeah, that was notice how because HQ was open, all right, he ran HQ, then he forged. Forge goes great with Reyna because they have to res or throw out the ice, and they have to pay one more, and you don't have to interact. You don't have to risk interacting with the ice, encountering it because you didn't run. You're forging because he already ran HQ that turn, which was open, probably due to lack of ice on MBN's part. Um. He was able to run HQ first, which activated the shutdown. That is, you know, people sort of see the shutdown coming. Like, if you run and there's an archer, and they'll be like, okay, I'll break the trash programs and the run. Run HQ. Shutdown. It's like they see that shutdown coming, right? But if you run HQ, right, and then, like, forge shutdown, that is that is hard to, to predict, right? Um, but you can't, th what are you going to do, throw that ice away? Uh, you throw the ice away, especially when you're short on it. That's perhaps even worse. Maybe it's worth the five credits to keep that Viper there. Especially, you know, when you have five credits uh, available, as MBN seems to right now. We've seen a Jackson. We've seen a Bernice. He's got a tag on him. Could that Armitage, who's got all his money is in the Armitage. He doesn't have any, oh, I think he's got two credits outside of it. But most of the money is in the Armitage. Might be worth it to trash it. All right, so while HQ is open, he's going to run it and check it. He's not going to trash Bernice. All right, now HQ is protected. Probably with that Bastion we saw or with the new ice. I guess we'll find out at some point. If I was Reyna, I would have I would have run R and D. Um, oh, Katie, here we go. Money's coming back now. Beat those traces, Katie. Yeah, you remove you remove the tag from Bernice. That's where all his money went. Um, right? I'd be like, run that remote because when you know, not run the remote. Run R and D because. You just want him to res and ice for one credit beyond. You know it's a Viper, right? So lose a click and the run. He's got to spend four, or you get in. What's that upgrade going to do? Really? It's probably just a Bernice. <laughs> just like that Bernice over there. And Bernice is unique, so if he reses another one, that one's gone. There we go. You know it's a Viper. Pays four. There's a click. Oh, he's tracing him. Is he boosting the click trace or the end the run trace? I guess it doesn't matter. He's poor. Doesn't look like he accessed anything, so. Yeah, just make him spend the credit on that. You gotta make sure he's under eight credits so he can't sand send anything. Oh, it's a breaking news. Is he gonna kill Katie? Katie's dead. Breaking news. Katie Jones murdered. She was hit by a car. A red car with two white stripes. Same old thing. Same old thing's gonna be pretty good with that forged and that uh, shutdown. Right? Oh, did he already same old thing forged? I think he did. And that ice was thrown out. It must Oh, it could have been the bat if it was the bastion, he had to throw it out because it only had three credits. Oh, he had another ice though. Okay. A little slow here for MBN. Need some more transactions, but I guess Reyna's ice killing and, and money draining is really, uh, you know, 
bringing him down a bit. There's an ice wall. Okay, that's a good one. Only got to pay two to res that. Keeps him out. Hmm, thinking. No really cards on the table yet for uh, Reina. She's sort of working like a criminal. I mean, well, with Forge and Shutdown, right? There we go, Parasite. Now it's looking like an Anarch. Starting off with a lot of event-based resource play. Bringing out a Parasite. Okay, here come the transactions. Beanstalk. Better, better drop some ice so you can uh, replace that Viper. It's going down. It's going down soon. Well, you know, ice that are only strength 0 to 2, right? 0, 1, or 2 are basically all things that can get parasited to death basically instantly. Something at strength 3, it's like you could try to clear virus counters to save it, but it's probably not worth it. But Viper is strength four, and that's approaching the territory where uh, clearing virus counters to keep Parasite from killing your ice becomes viable, right? I mean, and especially if it's if it's a big, like if it's a toll booth, I'm gonna try to save it if I can. Okay, QT Runner is spending some quality time. With all those events, he's got to have some he can play. As a sure gamble. Okay, that'll get you through some traces. And, oh, there you go. QT, sure gamble, liberated. Katie Jones. Cha-ching, it's money town. It is money town. I mean, that ice wall is still going to keep you out, which is big trouble if there is indeed a sand sand behind it. Because... Um, you know, corpse got eight, but uh, you know, if the corpse spends eight to score off a of sand sand right now, R and D and HQ are looking pretty weak. Um, and if there's any tracing ice, you're gonna walk. You basically the corpse is gonna have to spend one plus to resum, and you're gonna walk. Even if they do, you're gonna walk right through them with all that money uh, coming off that liberated accounts. So, yep. Uh, liberate accounts the card I have problems with so often because oh and there's a Xanadu right he threw out a Xanadu after the quality time pretty much telling you he had another one so he's not gonna run until he installs it he does whew thank God it's an ice wall for three you pay three for an ice wall oh my gosh well at least it keeps him out because he has no breakers but I mean he could get a parasite here comes here comes a sand sand Astro script uh oh NBN the ball is in NBN's court the Viper is dead. Nothing protecting R and D. Are we gonna see a keyhole? Are we gonna see a keyhole? It's an anarch. Are we gonna see a keyhole? He's got money. Oh, he's just gonna run R and D. It's Bernice. The other Bernice dies because it's unique. So when you res a second Bernice, the existing Bernice is immediately trashed. Uh, because as you, I've learned this recently, I messed up with Ash. Ash is a unique card. The only indicator that a card is unique is a small diamond next to the card's name. Uh, so you can, it's okay. You're allowed to have multiple copies of unique cards. You're allowed to have multiple copies on the table, but only one can be rezzed at a time. For a runner, it's like you get Aesop's Pawn Shop is unique. So you can install an Aesop's Pawn Shop, and then you can install another Aesop's Pawn Shop if you want to. But the first Aesop's Pawn Shop will automatically be trashed when you install the second one. In this case, res to Bernice, and the one that was already resed was immediately trashed when the second one was resed. Uh, and then it was dispatched of. Data Sucker, run. Hunter, great card. Great card against Reyna Parasite type decks because the res cost is low and the strength is high. Right? And those tags, I mean, he's he's got Xanadu, he's got well, Liberated Katie, you don't care. With Katie Jones, they don't want to take those tags. So they're going to pay the trace as high as a three trace, your MBN, you can boost it. Um, it's just all around. Uh, really underrated Ice Hunter. Even if you're not tagging and bagging, uh, which tends to be when people use hunter only and tag and bag decks, it's just really good. People have resources, man. They don't want to take tags. Um, 
and it's hard to deal with. It's, it's you know, to break it, to trace it. But then again, it doesn't keep people out, right? Hunter, it might keep him from running constantly, but it won't keep him out, you know, if they want to get in. He's going to fill up his data sucker through that hunter if he wants to. Basically, it just cost him two clicks and two credits because he's going to run, take the tag, hit it, clear the tag. Oh, he trashed it. He accessed it and trashed a Jackson Howard. It looks like he's beating the Hunter Trace. Remember, the MBN can only boost the Hunter Trace once per turn. Reyna has a built-in link. So the first time you hit it, he's probably going to boost it up to 5. So you pay 4. The second time, it's only going to be Trace 3. You pay 2. So that's basically 3 credits to get into R&D. Um, that drained his credit pool, but not too shabby. And here's another ice to help the Hunter out. That's probably going to lock up R&D quite a bit. I mean, he scored a character assassination. That's sort of the agenda. The corp, I mean, the corp doesn't want the runner to score anything. But if you're going to, it's like, if you're going to have one of my agendas, you can have that one. I'd even let you have that one, even though it's two points, before I let you have a breaking news. Because breaking news, I can, you know, it's a lot easier for me to score, to use, to hurt you, right? Character assassination is very... If I draw that, it's a pain in the ass. It's like, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? It's clogging up my hand. I can't score it. I can't put on it, you know. It's like, when I, if, I'm, if I can pull off a character assassination, and like it takes a lot. Um, meanwhile, the runner has a Katie Jones with some stuff on it, but more importantly, an Armitage, right? He was poor, shit poor. Armitage, people make fun of it. They think, oh, it's not efficient. It's not as good as other economy cards. Listen, when you are poor, 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 Armitage is the card to bring you back into the game quickly. You install it for just one credit. So if you're zero, take a credit, install Armitage, take four. You are back in the game next turn. No other card can have you back in the game from zero to, right? Hedge fund? Yeah, hedge fund is great. But it costs freaking five to play a hedge fund. You gotta have an Armitage first. I think he threw out that quality time. Um, all right, so without a corroder here, I mean, I would have used that quality time to find a corroder. Because um, <laughs> that Ice Wall Sand Sand is. Uh, Plus, there's an asterisk token already. He's begun to write his name on the moon. Or he's begun to write the words on the moon, I win. <laughs> right? He's already written the I and the W. The, sec the second I is already starting to be engraved. <laughs> you know, you got to, you know, the, the, the moon writing laser based in, in San San City is, uh, is, is blasting, so... I would I would do something about it, or this game is going to be over very soon. I mean, the, the Reina ability kept him, slowed him down a lot in the early game. You were able to get rid of some ice with your forward shutdowning parasiting. But, I mean, uh, I mean, if you didn't have the keyhole, you had a keyhole opportunity. Either I would have saved a parasite for that ice wall, killed the sand sand off. I mean, if you have a, if you have this much economy, you're not worried about ice with traces. If you need to get in, you can get in through those. Uh, I'm worried about ice that do something that you know ice wall. You cannot get through it. <laughs> I mean, I know you're hoping to get your corroder. Well, where is it? You don't have your mimic. You don't have a yog. You got nothing. A, a knight. A knight would help you here. Uh, there's a breaking news. Uh oh. Oh, closed accounts on the breaking news. Instead of killing Katie uh, or anything, he's closing the accounts. Um, oof. So yeah, this is this is a tricky thing. Against MBN, they can with their tagging, they can take your money with closed accounts, or they can trash your resources. It's pretty hard for them to do both in the same turn. No one plays freelancing, so. Um, 
you know, you have to sort of if you if there's a possibility that you could that could be coming your way soon. Uh oh, <laughs> San San plus Astro token character assassination. That's why he didn't bother to kill off Katie. You got to keep your money split between the resources and the table. Credit pool, right? He had too much money in the credit pool, not enough in the resources, so closed accounts. Now he still had the resources, so he could recover with them. But hey, that character assassination. Oof, this game is going to be over really soon. Okay, emergency crypts this time. <laughs> that's that's a bad sign. It costs a lot to put that crypts down. You got to fill it with virus counters and run. But you can be able to trash the sand sand. Will it even? I guess if we trash the sand sand, no. I mean, one he's one breaking news away from winning. But then again, there's only one breaking news left in the deck. Um. But I mean, he could just install an Astro script face down or a Beal if you can't trash the Sand Sand. Um, if you can, I mean, if you can't trash it, you can just be like, score, win. Uh, if you can trash it, you'll at least force him to uh, to fight it out. Or at least you can just keep that, you know, if you trash the Sand Sand, then load the Crypses and take money, then... Basically, you can't put anything in the remote uh, because you'll take it, right? So he's, he's pretty much forced to install another sand sand. <laughs> and if you build your resources up high enough that you can run somewhere else and then still be able to run the remote afterwards, you know you can start taking pot shots at R&D or HQ. Running archives. It's a Draco. He's making it strength something. Or is he just not resing it, I guess? Oh, okay. <laughs> or it doesn't even matter. He had the Astro script in his hand. The Sand Sand was already res. The game ends. So There you have it. You gotta trash that sand sand. He, he rezzed one. The, look at the two different games we saw. Game one, he brought back the sand sands with Jackson Howard, and he lost five of them. The sixth one stayed rezzed. In this game, he rezzed one sand sand. It stayed rezzed the whole game. The game ended in a flash. It was over. Right. This is why it is necessary to trash those. And if your deck can't do it um i mean reina pretty pretty much the way reina works is it's a little different right unlike the 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 run crazy run cheaply get rich criminal um which can trash the sand sands i think what reina has to do is keep the corp eternally poor by denying economy with xanadu and such that they can never afford to even res the sand sand they just never have eight on their turn because they're spending to res ice and this right uh, but you can only make someone spend to res more ice if you break the ice they've already got, which, uh, you know, if they can just res ice walls and then they're set, uh, that's the end of that. The, the only denial was you saw that he was, he was able to slow him down early with the, the shutdown forged. He just wasn't able to keep it up. He spent all the rest of his clicks taking money. So the end, the end.